So in this video, I'm going to show you how to actually make a board. Um, if you follow the initialization video again, um, this everything should work in here. Um, if it doesn't, just go to a TA and hopefully they'll be able to help you figure it out if you can't find it on your own. So uh, there's a few ways to place parts. You can click place, go manually, or you can come down here. Normally um, your, your layout here might be slightly different. Um, it kind of moves them around wherever, wherever you last leave them. I like mine right here on the side. So place manuals right here and it will open up a window and it will give you all the components in your uh, inside of your schematic you can click on them you can normally see the uh, the footprint over here or you can just select them all and how, whatever order you select them in is how it's gonna uh, drop them on the on the page so there's a, a lot of people have different ways of doing this some people like to lay out their board and do it piece by piece if it's a small board like this I'm just gonna lay them all out so C1, C2, C3, C4 uh, C5, D1, J1, J2, J3, U1, and U2. And I'm just going to hit OK. If you hit Cancel, it'll remove them all. So make sure you hit OK after you've laid them. Um, so there, now all my parts are laid. Um, let's go create a board outline. There's a few different ways of doing this. You can add rectangles um, and make sure that it's on the board outline layer. Or you can go up here to... Uh, I believe it's shape, uh, nope, setup, and outlines, and board outline. It, that'll open up another window. You can tell it I'm going to go ahead and have it place a rectangle, and I want a board edge clearance of, eh, we'll say 20 mil. The, the width of it's going to be, I want it about eh, or somewhere around one and a half inches, so that's 1,500 mils by 1500 mils and I should be able to fit all my parts within that so I'm gonna go ahead and hit click in the window and then hit close so that's created a board outline here and a, a package keep in all is what that is what it's what it's uh, creating there and what that means is I'll get these little DRC errors if my packages are outside of this layer here so that's why you see all these little red uh, red errors coming up here. So we're going to go over here. You can uh, set yourself in different modes here. So we're going to do placement edit mode. And then we're going to click on this one uh, and drag it. So now you can see the DRCs uh, moved away. But um, we're going to kind of start and lay this out like our schematic is laid out. So J1 is my input connector. And as you can see, it's moving in a way that I don't really want it to. I want it to be more fine in the movement. So you can come up here to Setup and Grids. And that'll open up another window here. Um, since these are not, this is a non-etched thing, I'm going to change this down to, uh, let's change it down to uh, 20 mils by 20 mils. And we'll do that the same for everything, actually. So hit OK. Now when I grab it I have much more movement. So let's drop that in. The next part would be my bridge rectifier. And I'm gonna right click and I'm actually gonna rotate that. So we're gonna rotate that like that. And you can see these little blue lines, those are rat that's what they call rat nests. You can turn those off if you want um, using this command. But you kinda want those on to know where parts are gonna be laid out, how they're gonna go. So uh, the next part is actually uh, this one right here, this capacitor. So we're going to drop that. We're going to rotate that as well. Put that in this vicinity. Let's give some more space in between this and that. Okay, once you have all your parts laid out, you can start running traces. Now, uh, there is one rat's nest missing for mine, and you can't see that the grounds are all connected. Uh, that's a setting I have set up, um, but yours should show you grounds connected. 
Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you can go over here and set yourself into etch edit mode if you'd like and uh, hit the add connect. You can be in general edit mode as well. It doesn't really matter, but etch edit's the best to be in if you're editing etches. So you're going to hit add connect. Now one of the things you need to keep in mind is your trace width size and the amperage that you'll be pulling. These can both pull uh, up to one amp total and this is but my transformer is rated for two amps so I need to have my trace width size for two amps on the um, uh, on this side back here because that's where all of it will be pulled through all the way up to uh, the connecting line that's coming from this capacitor to this one and this one and then on that one I can uh, shrink it down for one amp um, through the the lines that connect uh, this this um, side of my voltage uh, voltage regulators and this side as well. So we're going to go ahead and set the line width to 40 and that should carry carry two amps with half ounce copper just fine. Uh, I don't like this 90 degree bend. Uh, it's not good on the mill to have it like that so we're going to change that over to a 45 and you can kind of lay them where you want and click and then lay them again. Now that I don't like but we can move that later. So we're gonna lay another one in just like that. This will be the out and then this line right here is going to carry you can carry it from here you can carry it from here it's it's kinda up to you um, but that only needs to be around we'll make that down at 30 mil And then I'm going to move these, move these around slightly here in a second. All right, now I have all these traces laid. So I'm going to go over here to the slide command and kind of slide these things around and straighten them up a little bit. Okay, that's, uh, those are pretty pretty decent paths. They don't look like they've got a lot of turns in them, anything crazy going on. Um, now the last thing is, like I said, mine's not showing that the grounds are connected, but uh, they are. So I'm going to go ahead and instead of going through and connecting each one with a trace and having to get around and jump around to a bunch of these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a shape. I'm going to put it on the top and I'm going to uh, assign it a net. Once you click that little button, you'll have all the nets that are inside of your, your um, design. And I'm going to select the ground. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to zoom into this point over here. And I'm going to start drawing it across the board. And now, as you can see, this all turned green. It says ground in it at various places. And all my grounds have a little cross on them to connect them to that plane. Now something I don't like is how the size of these. I want the line, the connection lines uh, much thicker than that. Makes, a be makes for a better connection. So what I'm going to do is go to shape, go to global dynamic parameters. It's going to open up a window here and I'm going to go over to thermal reliefs and I'm going to change this value right here to 20 and hit apply. Now you can see all those crosses got much bigger. So now there is this much copper connecting to that pad. So once that's done you can hit OK but I recommend you go over to the clearance tabs. This is on Peralta's website. Um, they show their recommended oversized values. This should be through pin. I like to set everything at about 10 and then if it causes me issues I can take it down. and what you're going to do is you're going to see all these lines are going to open up a little wider. This space in between the line is called the insulation. This is what's keeping this this trace here connected uh, disconnected from this plane or whatever it's connected whatever's next to it another line um, and if you open it up a little wider it'll give you a little bit better insulation and you won't have to worry about maybe the mill leaving a tiny little bit of copper and trying to find that tiny little bit of copper that's uh, making connection so this will make things a lot safer for your board generation so once that's all set you can go ahead and hit apply and OK 
And uh, one other thing that I like to set up is come in here to set up design parameters. And I like to turn on display the plated and non-plated holes and hit OK. And now I can actually see my holes that are going to be drilled in the board as well. So there we go. So now this board has been created and it's ready to be milled. Um, the first thing we're going to have to do though to do that is we have to generate artwork files. Um, they're called Gerbers uh, or artwork files, whatever you want to call them. Um, I'll show you that in the next video. So you can save this, overwrite it, and I'll show you guys, see you guys in the next video.